Now, when you really stop and think about it, this is a rather strange topic to be discussing or to be doing an entire video on. The ramifications of the Snyder Cut of the Justice League, I mean. Because given just a cursory glance, this seems to be a case of customers telling a company what they wanted, the company giving them that, and then the customers buying it or subscribing to a streaming service in this case, as well as then, for the most part, enjoying it. And in the end, everyone's happy, it seems. Fans get a better version of the film, and Warner Brothers scores some points with those fans, makes some money perhaps, and gets subscribers to their streaming service. It's a win-win for everyone. But of course, that's not the end of the story here. It's barely the beginning. Because this isn't just an example of how wonderful the internet can be, that it can be used as a tool that bridges the communication gap between customer and company, so that one can produce exactly what the other wants to, again, end up with that win-win scenario where everyone is happy. No, for some, this isn't an example of that at all. For some, this is about the worst thing that could have happened to the film or entertainment industry. For some, they see this as the opening of Pandora's box, that nothing will be the same again. They see this as rewarding the worst of the worst for being toxic and obnoxious, that it teaches them that the louder and angrier they are, the more likely they are to get what they want. Just like a bad parent giving into a child throwing a temper tantrum in order to silence them, isn't going to be very good in the long run. Furthermore, they see this as an invitation for other fan bases, or maybe the same one, to do the exact same thing in the future. And look, before going on here, I have to confess that this is not something I've kept up with over the years. The push for the Snyder Cut, I mean, yes, I'm a fan of DC, and I thought the original version of the Justice League was pretty bad, and certainly wasn't opposed to a better one being released. In fact, I was all for it and even excited by the prospect. But I'm not a hardcore fan, and it's not something I've stayed on top of. And so before creating this video, I went back to do some research. I went back to look to see just how bad it got, because I've heard of everything from death threats to just non-stop harassment. I've heard they were even more toxic than the Star Wars fan base, which I do know quite a bit about, and I know how they've been portrayed in the media as terrible and horrible people for not liking the sequel trilogy, and The Last Jedi in particular. Heck, I've personally been labeled some pretty awful things for not liking that movie. And though I'm not saying that every fan who didn't like the sequels has been well-behaved, certainly some did or said things that were wrong or went way too far, I'm not trying to deny that in the least, but as someone who's been in the middle of it here with Star Wars, I know how often some like to extrapolate the actions of the few onto the many, or to purposely conflate what even one person did with an entire group, which is a horrible, horrible thing to do in general. And they do it in order to get clicks and views on their articles and videos. The more sensational something is, the more attention it gets, the more money you make, and truth be damned. And so while looking back into this, I sure found a lot of articles about just how bad some were acting who were calling for the Snyder Cut, but I didn't find a lot of evidence. I didn't find a ton of screenshots or tweets or anything like that, even in these articles that went on and on about how terrible some of these people were acting or how bad the whole situation was. And if I've learned anything in my time researching such things, Usually when there's evidence, when they can point the finger directly at someone or many someones, they are more than happy to do that. But even though I didn't personally find much, that's not to say it didn't happen to a troubling extent. I'm sure it did. I'm sure this isn't entirely made up. Plus, even just one person taking things too far and attacking someone over a movie of all things should be considered wrong and completely unacceptable. After all, I'm a firm advocate of holding individuals responsible for their actions, and in this case, I'm sure plenty of individual people took this way too far and did and said some pretty nasty things. In other words, I'm not trying to deny it happened, nor am I trying to defend anyone who did go too far. I'd never condone online harassment. However, here, I just can't stand it when, again, it all gets purposely conflated, or maybe turned into something bigger than it actually is or was, and that people who didn't do anything wrong get blamed as well. Way too much experience with this in the Star Wars fandom, Though yes, again, certainly some did go too far there too. But another thing I found while looking into all this, though I'd heard a little bit about it before, is that fans, or those calling for the Snyder Cut, had also raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for suicide prevention, which is something that conveniently gets left out of almost every article that talks about how toxic and terrible the Snyder advocates are or were. In other words, as is the case with pretty much any large group of people, or even a small group of people, you have some bad... You have some good, and a whole lot of people somewhere in the middle. And though you can certainly feel like giving the fans the Snyder Cut is giving in to the worst of them, it's also rewarding the best of them, or those who were just generally civil in the way they went about asking for this, which I'm sure is the bulk of people when we step back and look at just how many people were in support of this. 
Another thing to consider is it also allowed Zack Snyder to finish his vision or version of the film after stepping away from the film in the wake of his daughter taking her own life, which I'm sure is something everyone with a heart understands him doing. There's also another recent example of something similar happening. The pleas of Star Wars fans to bring back the Clone Wars were answered by Disney, and its return ended up being a massive success for them. And as far as I know, at least, virtually no one went too far in that case or harassed anyone. Basically, what I'm saying here is there are a lot of different ways this can and should be looked at. And though I can understand the concerns of some that they fear it will only embolden the worst of the worst to do this sort of thing again, it can also be looked at as what fans can accomplish for good when they unite, again pointing at the money raised for charity, or that, yeah, sometimes fans can raise their voice and get what they want, and that it can be a win for both them and the company, something that makes everyone happy. But there's also another component to this that I see a lot of people upset about as well, which is the fan entitlement argument, that even those fans who, shall we say, peacefully asked for this had no right to make such a demand, that they don't have any sort of right to ask these companies or studios what to make, or what to do with these properties that they own. I've even seen a few people who say fans should be happy they get anything at all. Which is honestly one of the dumbest things I've ever heard, because the reason why a company like Disney buys Lucasfilm and hence gets the rights to Star Wars is to make money off of it, period. Sure, some within the company may actually love and enjoy Star Wars, I'm sure some do, but on the whole, or from the business side of things, its value is simply measured in dollars and cents. They don't buy these properties to, out of the goodness of their heart, let certain writers and directors have the opportunity to make whatever movies they want that we fans should then be thankful to get at all. Or should I say, when they do something like that, it doesn't go so well. In all reality, they bought it to make movies that fans will pay for, again, to make money. If Disney truly cared about pure creativity, they wouldn't make Star Wars movies and shows at all. They would allow, again, writers and directors to make whatever they wanted. The harsh reality or truth is creativity has no actual value to a company if no one will pay for it, and there's far, far less risk making a Star Wars movie than there is in making something original, because Star Wars has a large, pre-existing fanbase and a name that most everyone recognizes. And it's really that name and recognition that Disney paid all that money for, not so much Star Wars in itself, but for all the money-making potential that goes along with it. All those fans they know will buy whatever they put out there, and those who may not so much be fans, but tend to go see Star Wars films just because. And so it's always strange to me to hear people say fan entitlement ruins these franchises when, in theory at least, these companies bought these properties to give fans exactly what they wanted in order to make money. Now I'm not saying that's always what happens, but again, in theory, that's the idea. And it's not outrageous for fans to then expect quality and to, on some level, yes, get what they want. And really, I know of no other industry that works like some people think the film industry should work, that expects customers to just be happy they get anything at all. And though I've made the example before, could you imagine going to a restaurant and being told you're acting entitled because you want good service and food, and then being upset you didn't get it? Like, you should just be happy they made you anything at all, even though you paid for it. And if you really want to see toxicity, hop online and read some restaurant reviews. Some people say the meanest, harshest things about not only the business itself, but the owner or oftentimes the people who work there. But no one bats an eye at those reviews. No one cares if some random employee at some random restaurant gets attacked online because, for better or worse, we usually just make the assumption that the customer truly had a terrible experience and thus has the right to complain. But criticize a movie or a famous person for doing a poor job with something and too many make the opposite assumption. Somehow it's your fault for not liking it, or something is wrong with you. Which again, not saying it's cool or okay to harass anyone online, and some do go way, way too far. But for every one of them, for every person who harassed people over the Snyder Cut, there were countless others who went about asking for it peacefully, or they donated to charity perhaps, or maybe they didn't say anything at all. They just sat back and quietly kept their fingers crossed, hoping we would get it, and were grateful when they did. And should those people be punished for the actions of the few, or sometimes even the one? And look, I certainly think there are some fine lines here, and a whole lot of nuance. Because though I think fans should have their voices heard, and for what they ask for to at least be considered, I also don't think they should be dictating everything. Because sometimes, no, fans don't even know what they want until they get it. And sometimes, yeah, they can overreact when things don't go their way. Which is why I think the absolute key to all of this is finding the right people to be put in charge of these major brands, those who have the trust of the fans. 
I mean, why is the MCU beloved by almost all of its fans? Well, there's many factors, of course, but probably the biggest one is the man overseeing it all, that being Kevin Feige. When I hear him talk, I not only hear a passion for what he's doing, but I hear a fellow fan of Marvel Comics, and one who knows it and gets it even more than I do. Basically, I hear someone I can trust with this property that I love. Not that it's my say, but I think you get what I mean. I feel like not only is someone who truly gets it running things, but that even though Disney, who owns Marvel, only sees it in terms of dollars and cents, he sees it and treats it as I do or would. As a fan first, he cares and loves Marvel. And so I think what fans get the most upset about is when they're reminded of the truth, or when the illusion of it all wavers a bit or a lot and they see behind the curtain. Because we all know that these companies who own the properties we love, again, they just care about money. We know that and are, I think, willing to accept that when the product is good. But when it's not good, or when these companies make poor choices or make other questionable decisions, the last thing most fans want to do is give their money to a mega corporation, mistreating or just using a property they love for money. And when things go wrong with Star Wars, for example, we oftentimes blame Disney on the whole, yet when they go right, we usually thank the individual or individuals. We're not thankful to Disney that The Mandalorian is great, we're thankful to Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni because we know they're the ones that made it happen, and all Disney did was be wise enough to let them. Is that fair? Maybe, maybe not. But as long as the money rolls in from Disney+, Plus, I don't think they'll care. Besides, I'm sure they'll pat themselves on the back all the same. So anyway, here to wrap this up, this is all much more complicated of a situation than most want to realize or admit to. And it's both easy and lazy to point at the loudest, angriest, and most toxic in the fanbase and make a bunch of assumptions that all too often see large groups of people condemned for something they have absolutely no part in. In fact, this is a larger problem with the world today in general, but let's not get into that. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think about all this. Where are the lines here between fan entitlement and customers getting the products they want? Does the release of the Snyder Cut set a bad and dangerous precedent or not? Whatever the case may be, leave a comment below and let's talk some DC, Star Wars, Marvel, and fandoms in general. And until next time, thanks for watching.